All right, guys. Hi, it's Kelly coming at you live from the Cards by Christine studio in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. I am just going to pull up my phone and make sure that we are indeed live. Um, we are fingers crossed praying for no technical issues tonight because I am not the master guru of this ship. Oh, look at that. I am live. That is fantastic. So I'm just going to get my phone station set up here so that I can watch comments as they're coming through. Um, hi, Faye. Thank you so much for joining. I am so excited. We have five viewers already, so um, I will do my best to keep up with all this. Typically when I'm videoing, I'm doing my Technique Thursdays or whatever. Um, I am not live. So live is something that I've only done a couple of times. Um, I love it. I love stamping with you guys. I love just um, being your creative coach's sidekick. Um, so if you guys are newer to the page or not as familiar with Cards by Christine, um, my name is Kelly Lamb. I am Chris's cousin. I am her marketing manager or something of that variety. Hi, Karen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, so that being said, this is not my forte. Um, I do love doing this kind of stuff. I love stamping. I love um, getting in front of the camera and doing this with you. It's just not my day to day. Chris does this a lot more often than I do. So hello, Jennifer and Randy. Um, it is so nice that you guys are tuning in and joining us. Um, tonight we are doing the July Paper Pumpkin Kit. It is fantastic. What a great kit. Hello, Tammy. Thanks for joining us. Um, I hope you guys love it. If you haven't seen it yet, you'll be seeing it in just a couple of minutes. Um, and it's, it's a good one. It's a great one. Typically, hi, Victoria. Hello, Sandy. Um, typically, Chris has extras to sell. However, um, I think when news got out about what this one looked like and what it all entailed, um, she actually has already sold all the extras that she has. So um, there are no extras to be sold. Um, so if you have one and if you are a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, consider yourself lucky. If you are looking for one, um, sorry, but we can't help you out with that this month. So hi, Victoria. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, that does bring up a good point. And hello, Kathy Jackson as well. Um, we do appreciate if you share this to your friends and families um, on your timeline or on your page um, so that they can see it and learn about stamping and join us as well. Hi, Jill Butson. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, Helen. Um, yeah, so I stepped in the hive today and I noticed that there were some, sorry, I dropped my bag. Uh, I noticed that there were some upgrades to the space. Um, Chris has an Amish friend, his name is Monroe, and he did all the beautiful cabinetry and woodworking for this, um, for this hive that we're working in. And um, he is working now on finishing off her filming station. So I'm so excited to be in here and using some of the new um, carpentry. And the funny thing is I saw Monroe last night. Um, so Monroe is an Amish gentleman. My mom took me to a haystack. Now, I don't know if anyone, like if this is just like a normal everywhere that there's Amish type of things or um, if it's kind of just a, a special something in the, the Holy Land area where I live. Um, so at St. Anne, they had an Amish haystack. So it was a basically like potluck that the Amish cooked and you could come and um, eat along with them and it was fantastic. So it's called a haystack because it stacks up. Um, and there were, I'm not kidding. There were probably like 15 different, um, ingredients. It started with like crushed up crackers and then, um, white rice and then hamburger meat and salsa and let's see, tomatoes, onions, lettuce, um, like just all sorts of ingredients that at the end it was topped with like shredded um, carrots. Then we had some like cheese, like saucy cheese. 
And oh man, it was just, it was fantastic. I'm so glad I went. I've never gone before. I definitely will be going again. Um, and let me catch up here. Hello, Holly, RJ, um, Karen. Yes, isn't this hive beautiful? Hello, Gail, and let's see here, Kathy King. Hi, everybody. So that wasn't even the best part, though. Amish are amazingly talented at cooking. So not only was the meal great, but then they had literally 12 to 15 different pies to choose from with homemade ice cream. Oh my God, it was so delicious. I had um, a peanut butter pie and the homemade ice cream. And then um, my son had a custard pumpkin pie and there was a chocolate pie. My dad had um, peach. Oh my goodness. It was so, 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 so good. So anyways, Monroe, the Amish gentleman that made all the cabinets was manning the homemade ice cream station. And oh man. So I got to say hi to him and uh, meet him. It was the first time I actually met him um, and enjoy him and his amazing, delicious food. So that's my short story about the Amish and Monroe. So Oh, we are making paper pumpkin tonight and I do have a little bit of a alternative project up my sleeves. I kind of dove in a little bit. It's not finished, so we'll see how that comes together. Oh, I'm just a little nervous about that. <laughs> but anyways, we'll, we'll get through the, the actual paper pumpkin cards first and then we'll go to that. So, all right, we've got 33 on live with us already, um, and it's only about five after. And we are, so I'll probably share a little more stories for a little bit, see if anyone else jumps on, and then we will um, go from there. Hello, Janet. Thank you so much for joining in. I know, I'm making myself hungry, guys. Like, seriously, it was so good. And I heard they're having one next month, too. I'm definitely going. And I literally was thinking about like, who could I invite from the area that might want to join me? Like it was so good. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a very unique experience. Um, there were a lot of Amish families there participating, um, in the cooking and the serving. And, um, it was just so cool. I bought myself a loaf of Amish bread as well, which I love Amish bread. So we are fortunate to have a lot of Amish families in the area. Um, so we see them around on their buggies and stuff like that, going from place to place. So it's really neat. My mom loves reading Amish stories, like Amish mysteries and stuff like that. So it's funny. Um, but actually the reason we were there, we were celebrating my aunt's 70th birthday. Now, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we had a call for cards for Chris's mom's 70th birthday. So in the last month, I have had three aunts all turn 70. So like, it's crazy. Um, apparently that's a hip and happening uh, milestone in my family right now. So hello, Colleen. Thank you so much for joining me on my uh, makeshift paper pumpkin night. So I hope we enjoy crafting together tonight. I think we will. I'm so excited. I've had an extremely busy couple of weeks and it's kind of culminating. Hopefully next week I'll start to wean down on my craziness but um at work I work at a children's museum and we're still kind of recovering from the pandemic um but we're doing some extremely great fun things so I'm really excited about all the things that we've accomplished but um we last week had a ribbon cutting for a new exhibit that we opened um anyone that's local to the area it was sponsored by Holiday Automotive and it has just been a joy working with them and their marketing team Hello, Mary, um, to help get some of these creative developments moving forward. So that's been fun. And then next week we have our annual fundraiser. So that's another really fun thing that I've been working on. Um, and it's been keeping me busy by all means. Screen freezing off and on. I sure hope not. How is everyone else doing? Because like I said in the start of this, I'm not so great on the um, technological troubleshooting. So hopefully everything is going fine from the hives perspective. Um, and I, I don't wish that your <laughs> internet is causing the problem, but in this instance, I do kind of secretly wish that um, it's not a, a source problem. It's more of a your problem. That sounds really bad. So like, please don't take it that way. <laughs> 
Okay, so it seems like we're maybe getting a little bit of internet troubles, but some people are doing fine. So hopefully we're still doing good. Um, yeah, so that has been keeping me busy. And then the last thing that like really was like icing on the cake, although it really is a great thing. My son is three and a half and we've been talking about potty training for a year and he's just he's he goes on his own terms um he really is somewhat independent and somewhat very um I don't know I really can't find the best word to describe him but last Sunday so like a week and a half ago he decided he was ready to start potty training and I'm like uh, I'm really busy, especially with work this week. Um, I had sitters lined up for a bunch of days and that's a really hard thing to hand over to a sitter and expect them to carry, up, carry on for you. But he has been doing so fantastically. I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of um, having had the patience to wait. I mean, I've had, I have a lot of friends that have kids around the same age and they've successfully got their kiddos potty trained. And I was getting a little frustrated at myself for not being able to, to kind of get through that. But I'm just, I'm so happy. He's doing so well. I'm so proud of him. So that has just been another thing that has been kind of keeping me busy. Now I myself am watching and I just had a live feed interruption. So eek, hopefully that was just not gonna be a super big problem for me tonight. So um, please definitely keep keeping me in the loop about how technology is going. And if you are having problems viewing me as well, um, ugh, man, so I am getting some feedback that we're having freezing. So I'm just gonna keep carrying on. Hopefully everything goes okay um but like i said please just keep me in the loop and with that we are up to 44 so i've i've gathered about a dozen extra followers in the last little story that i told so i think we're gonna get started and jump into this paper pumpkin so dun, da, da, dun. here it is <laughs> this is not exciting let's open it up and we'll get to the goodies so oh no i knocked chris's necklace down Okay, so let's break this bad boy open and we are about to kick off our July paper pumpkin crafting night. This is like Christmas morning. Um, opening paper pumpkins is always so much fun. So, okay, let's get that out of here and we will open up this bad boy. Always, or not always, but most of the time they have an advertisement for the next month. Um, it is on the Cards by Christine website already, so um, more information about this box and when you can tune in live for the next Paper Pumpkin, um, but it's going to be about a hope box. Shelly Gardner is um, the founder of CEO, or excuse me, the founder of Stampin' Up, um, and she crafted and created this hope box Paper Pumpkin kit. Um, there looks to be beautiful colors and um, it looks like it's going to be kind of like butterfly imagery and then the box itself is going to be special for you to create this hope box and I did see a little video that I'm going to share the link of of what she put in her hope box after she was done creating her crafts um, and it's really cool listening to her describe what she put in this hope box and why so if you haven't seen that yet um, or haven't seen a sneak peek of the box yet, please go out to Cards by Christine and check that out. And in the next couple of days, I will be sharing the link to that hope box as well. So very cool. It's going to be a fun paper pumpkin. If you've never subscribed before, um, it would be a good one to subscribe to. Then every month we get a Stampin' Spot. Um, this month it is Garden Green. We don't use these because we have the full ink collection. So I brought in my Garden Green stamp pad and I will just be using my normal stamp pad. Then each month we also get an exclusive photopolymer set. This month we've got a big tree, um, some tree details, then a bunch 
well, two little fireflies here and then a bunch of different quotes. So we've got dream big, aim high, let the adventure begin, the world awaits you, explore, congrats, and let your light shine. So those are the stamps, beautiful font that they used this month, so I really like them. Um, and then when we open our tissue paper package, we reveal the goodies. So this month's kit features fun folds, kind of. Um, really cool cards, I can't wait to show them off, but um, we've got four each of three different designs of these beautiful nature-inspired cards. So, um, oh, I'm so sorry, Deb, that you're having such troubles. I really hope no one else is having this many troubles either. Happy that you're gonna come back and catch the replay, but um, yeah, I hope you have a great evening. Um, so yeah, we've got these really cool stamps and then um, these beautiful nature-inspired cards. So that's what we're going to be making tonight. I'm just going to kind of move some things around so that we don't have quite as much of a mess. Um, let's see here. Make myself some room. I'm still getting my workflow together. And then I'm also going to grab a drink before I get started. So, all right. I gotta put the cover back on because seriously, if we have a spill, we're gonna be in for a disaster. All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to, oh, pauses every three to five seconds. Wow, okay, we are really having trouble here. I'm still, broadcasting fine on my viewing of my self. So I think the, I just had an issue once and I think that may be passed. Um, so we'll see, we'll see if it starts to be a big issue for a lot of people and then we'll see what kind of troubleshooting we can and can't um, do. So please keep me informed. I will do my best to resolve the issue if it keeps happening. All right, so in this kit, we've got these beautiful envelopes um, that are for each of the cards. We've got some dimensionals, glue dots, and adhesive sequins. The card bases, now this is where the magic is really gonna happen for this kit. Um, we've got, so specialty folds, and we'll punch these out and, and get them all going. We're gonna make one each of each of the designs. So I'm going to lay them all out. Then we've got this one with the trees, the rolling hills on the inside. And then we've got this fun little camper. And on the inside of that, we've got these types of trees. Wow, those are very pretty, so cool. Okay, then we've got some punch out, um, circles and banners as well as then some trees so that's what we've got in our kit and then the instructions now if you are new to paper pumpkin um you may not know that these have been recently upgraded um but they have and they're so great so now on the inside the instructions are full color um and they kind of have hello deanne um from west michigan we kind of have um, some less words and more visual um, instructions. So that's kind of cool how they kind of upgraded these and I think it's working well for people. So, all right, then let's see here, which card should we start with? Oh, and I forgot to mention on the back, they show um, some ideas for what to do with your um, alternative projects. So I thought that was really cool. Um, I'm going a little rogue with the alternative project and I really hope it works out. So um, bear with me, after we're done with all these cards, we're going to do an alternative that I really hope turns out cool. So, all right, so let's get started. The first card that they do is the camper cards. So for that, we're going to 
I'm gonna move these out of the way and grab just one. Hello, Helen. Um, it is a fun kit. I am so excited. I think it's gonna be great. Um, so we'll see how, hopefully they're nice and easy. I actually did watch a video of um, a Stampin' Up! employee putting it together. They always, you know, they've been marketing um, these kits very well over the last couple of years. And um, I, I'm very impressed with how they um, show off the kits. The thing that's hard about them um, showing the video of how to put the kits together is that um, mail service can tend to be all over the board. So sometimes when they're pu putting that out there, it's kind of ruining the surprise for people. But um, yeah, it's just... It's hard. You can't you can't quite um, accommodate everyone, and I love that they put those videos out there because it really um, the instructions are nice, but a lot of people are visual, and being able to um, actually see someone putting it together is helpful. So, um, Paper Pumpkin has a Facebook account that you can follow. Sorry to lose you, Carissa, and anyone else that is having trouble with the um, the broadcast issues. Um, hopefully we're doing okay. I'm still doing okay on my own end viewing, but we'll see. Um, so, so far all I've done is punched out the um, excess and used my bone folder to burnish the edge. Because this is a fun fold, um, it's really important to burnish that because it still is kind of popping up, popping open a little bit just from that extra layer. So, all right. Back to the inside. So that was step one, was punching these pieces out and folding it. Step two, grab your block. Now, the first time you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, you do get a Paper Pumpkin block. It's a little different than the um, blocks that you would order from Stamping Up. It doesn't have quite the nice rounded edges. However, um, it still is a very nice block. So. Um, you do get everything you need if you are new to paper crafting. Um, everything for everything that you need is inclusive. So let's grab. Oh man, people are having lots of trouble with this. Is anyone having um, no problems with the broadcasting? Because I still am not having troubles. So I think I'm going to keep rolling. And I'm so sorry that everyone is having troubles. So um, hopefully we can get this resolved. Or Why is the internet so pesty sometimes? Oh, so frustrating. All right, then I'm going to punch out a tree here. So these are already kind of watercolored on their own. And... Um, pre-perforated so that's so nice I need to find a piece of scrap paper or you know what there we go this will work all right so then the next step is to open up your stamp pad oh man um, open up your stamp pad and ink up your stamp and then stamp away right onto your, and you're gonna see my head here for a second, right onto your tree. Not too bad, keep going. Yeah, I, the problem is, if I were to stop, I don't really know exactly what Chris does to resolve it when she has problems. So, I think I'd really be sh throwing the show for a, quite a, quite a ride. So, I'm gonna, hopefully keep going and not lose everyone. Um, so then I'm going to clean off my photopolymer stamp and move on to the next step, which is stamping the sentiment. Let the adventure begin. Oh, that's a brilliant suggestion, Susan. So I was a little thrown by the, um, excessive white border on here as well so I don't know if you can see that and my hand is giving it its own shadow but there's a large white border around the tree and I kind of didn't love it either so Susan said that she used granny apple green to color the white edges around the tree I love that suggestion um that's 
quite good. Um, a good suggestion to kind of fill that in. So then take a long sentiment. They used let the adventure begin, which is right here. And then we're gonna punch out one of the banners. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. And have the banner end going off to the left. And then we're gonna stamp our sentiment on there. Ooh, I almost got an inky finger. All right, let the adventure begin. I see there's a spot that I missed. Photopolymer stamps are the best, um, especially as a beginner stamper. You can see through them, so it makes it easy to place your stamp where you want it to go. Um, and then if you do have trouble inking, like you missed a section or um, whatnot, you can see it before you stamp it down. You can see that it doesn't look quite as green as the rest of them. So um, it kind of prevents problems before they happen. All right, so I think we're done with the stamping now. I'm going to close my stamp pad and then move on to some adhesives. So we're going to put small dimensionals on the back of the sentiment. They show here that they used three. And to be honest, I think I said small, but I don't know. The dimensionals come in the pack. Oh, here we go. That's where they are. And they are the large dimensionals. So whoops, I grabbed the wrong one. I grabbed what was at my workstation next to me. So you would use the dimensionals that came in the kit and they are the regular size dimensionals. And you can see here kind of quite faintly um, on the screen, I'm sure, but if you have the instructions in front of you, it'll show nice and fine. Um, they show you that they suggest using three. And then we're gonna move on to the next step where we adhere this tree to the back of the camper and they show these black dots and that's to signify using the glue dots to um, adhere. And it's nice that they show the appro approximate location of them because then um, you know where to put them without having to kind of second guess um, so that they don't stick out behind the camper. So they put one here and here and here. Okay, so then I'm going to bring my card base back in and peel off the back of these dimensionals. And now the tree kind of anchors itself. Let's see here. Behind. And here I go again, kind of getting it in the wrong spot. Um, okay, so I'm gonna po put this down and then I'll explain to you where I adhered it. So, another thing, um, if you do have more stamping supplies, you always could use other forms of adhesives as well. Um, so, let me, ha ha ha. I've got a glue dot stuck to me. Okay, so the tree, the bottom of the tree lines up with this like hitch on the trailer. And then you try not to get the, um, any of the tree hanging out on the edge. I see that I got um, just a little bit over. So I'm gonna grab my paper scissor and trim that off just a hair. Um, hi, Bonnie, thank you for joining us. Oh my goodness. You guys, I'm just having all sorts of flustery fun tonight. Then we're going to take the banner and the banner has dimensionals on the back. And we're gonna adhere that down. This card is so simple and it's coming together really easily, um, which I love. Um, so let's get that stuck down. And then the last step is going to be putting the um, embellishments on. So. These sequins, there's a light blue and an orangey color. Um, I don't really know exactly what color they are. Um, sometimes they say, oh, coordinating stamping out colors. 
So on the back here, it says coordinating Stampin' Up colors. Basic black, Bermuda Bay, crushed curry, early espresso, flirty flamingo, garden green, granny apple green, mango melody, night of navy, and whisper white. So my best guess is that those embellishments are mango melody and Bermuda Bay. Really doesn't look like a Bermuda Bay. So maybe it's not exactly those colors, but that's just kind of what I'm going off of. So <laughs> my apologies. You guys, I'm doing my best, right? So they show you to use two of the orange and three of the blue, and then they show you relatively where they put them. One, two, three, four. I don't know where they put, oh, and the third one is on the tree. So let's do that. We've got an orange up here, a blue. Thanks, Tammy. I feel like in a lot of things I'm doing um, these days, I am flying by the seat of my pants. Um, and I am not typically the kind of person that loves to do that, but my life has definitely lent to being like that, um, just by how crazy and chaotic it is with the kids. So I kind of am just winging it. All right, so let me give you a close up on that. We've got an orange and a blue and then an orange and two blues, um, one on the tree and one on the background. So watch this. When you open this card, and I need to move it a little bit, you've got the camper tree and sentiment, then you're opening up to this beautiful tree background, and then you've got the inside of your card. Now the cool thing about this fun fold is that look at all that real estate that you have to write on. If you are sending this card um, more as like a thinking of you or to some a special friend, you have a lot of space to really personalize it. Um, and you even could decorate the inside if that is your prerogative. So we've got one card. I'm going to move that off to the side and we're going to move on to the next one, which is the lantern card. So I'm going to kind of clean up my space a little bit, grab the lantern and see what that one's all about. Okay, so again, the first step is folding the card. So let's do that. Get it nice and burnished with your bone folder. An extremely important step in making these cards successful because of the fun fold feature. Then we're going to again pop out the negative spaces that we don't want showing on our card. We're going to do that carefully because this could tear and that would not be the look we're going for. Okay, so just two more pieces. Okay, of everyone that's left watching, I completely forgot about this. Um, you know, this isn't my day job. Did Technique Thursday post today? I sure hope it did. Um, I'm trying a new um, way of uploading it that hopefully <laughs> is working. Um, so I honestly had such a busy day today that I completely forgot um, to double check that it uploaded. But let me just take a quick minute to show off um, this card. It is the last of our Christmas in July cards. Um, and we've got um, the vignette technique. So I kind of framed in the stockings by stamping these images. And then I used a blending brush with um, soft, see, no, soft succulent to kind of darken the edges and um, make it look like a vignette, which is a photography technique. So what do you think? If you didn't have the opportunity to check that video out, or if it didn't upload, um, and I will double check that after we are done here tonight, just to make sure that it did, um, that is or will be out there shortly for you to check out. So, all right. So after we get the um, card prepped, we're going to take and stamp. We've got two things to stamp on this one. So. The sentiment says, let your light shine, and it gets stamped on one of these circles. So we're gonna punch out a white circle, 
and then we're gonna stamp in again our garden green. Yes, your video posted. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Um, hello, Angie. Thanks for tuning in, and bye, Kathy. Um, thank you for tuning in, and I do hope you get the opportunity to catch the replay. Ouch. All right, so I'm gonna bring my foam mat back in for the stamping. When you do stamp with photopolymer, it is a best practice to use the piercing mat or a foam mat to give your stamp a little cushion. The difference between a photopolymer stamp and a traditional red rubber stamp is the fact that a rubber stamp does have um, a foam cushion, whereas the photopolymer does not have that. And then um, you don't get as crisp of a stamped image. And that is why you need want to put the um, mat beneath you when you're stamping. Okay, so we've got the sentiment. And then we take one of the fireflies and it appears as though it's the bigger one. Hmm. I think I'm gonna do both of the fireflies. And let me just swap these stamps out. Okay, so I'm gonna put one firefly on one side of the black in maybe the upper left-hand corner and then the other sized firefly on the other side of the black in the opposite corner so that we can still see what we're stamping. So then we're gonna take it into the garden green and stamp it in these um, illuminated spots so that um, we've got cute little fireflies in the night sky. And I'm going to flip it over and use the small one up top. Oh my goodness, that is so cute. Okay. Again, cleaning off our stamps, best practice. I used to not really do that. And it just, now that I'm in the habit of it, it's just something I try to always do as I'm doing it. Because otherwise, I come back a week later and my stamps are still on the block and they're still dirty and then they're not put away. Um, I have noticed that I am more successful in making projects and getting things done if I start with a clean slate. Um, so I try to get my work surface as cleaned off as possible um, when I'm done with the project. Doesn't always happen, but that's okay. Um, then we take our dimensionals and they've got three dimensionals in the bottom of that circle. So we'll go ahead and do that. I should flip it over and make sure it still is how it is supposed to be. Okay, then I'm going to peel off the backing and stick this down. So we've got our sentiment going in the bottom right hand corner hanging off just a little bit um, and it looks like by their reference and obviously you can put it wherever you want but by their reference it's not quite touching the lantern okay and then again we're going to bring in embellishments this time we're going to do three orange and two blue i'm going to see if i can see where they stuck them all and then i'll show you where mine ended up So, what do you guys think of this kit? I am loving it. Um, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing it sold quite well for them, which is good. So, where's the last blue? So, in the end, what I did with my embellishments was one, two, three orange ones, and one, two blue ones. So, here is how this card turned out. So we've got Let Your Light Shine and the Lantern, and then you open up to this cute little firefly and a couple embellishments on this beautiful branch image. And then again, we've got a clean white slate on the inside. All right, we've got two done already. Moving on now to the last card, which is this beautiful evergreen card. I'm excited about this. I'm actually just going in the order that the kit 
says to go, and I'm, I'm saving the best for last, just ironically based on how they put it in order. So again, bring in your bone folder. Because of the double fold here, I have been burnishing on both ends. I think that's a good, or both sides, front and back, um, to just give it that nice crisp fold. The best kit in a long time, and Susie and Sandy as well agree. Tammy agree. Yeah, this is a really cool kit. Um, I definitely hope, I don't know how this all goes, but sometimes I do know that they have extras or um, potentially even refill kits. This is a refill kit I would absolutely purchase. So Stampin' Up, if you're out there listening, <laughs> can we make the magic happen? Okay. So that is step one. Step two is bringing in the stamps. So we've got the textured pine needles and dream big aim high. Again, you could use any of the long and narrow sentiments. There were three options to choose from. Then we're going to bring in our um, trees. So, oh, sorry, I've got a little bit of a cascading mess over here. So I'm just going to pick that up just a little bit so that I don't have a huge mess by the end of this. Okay, so we're going to punch out one of these trees. <clears throat> okay. Then, love the trailer and the lantern. That's funny. Um, so I'm not from necessarily a camping family per se, um, so the trailer doesn't do too much for me. The lantern and the um, fireflies, I think, are adorable. I love that one. Um, but something about trees. I just love trees and nature. So that's um, why I really like this card. So you'll see here, the stamp is quite a bit larger than the tree that we're stamping on. And they show it beautifully in this diagram that you're just stamping the bottom portion of the tree and you're gonna get a lot that hangs off. So again, you might see my head here for a second as I try to center this. So, where am I? Ah, I have my instructions wrong. Okay, here we go. Um, so that is what I mean. Now, when I move this away, look at all that stamped image that didn't get on there, but that's okay. We got enough of what we needed. Now, again, I'm going to clean off my stamp and then take it off the block and switch to our sentiment. Dream big, aim high. Um, because of the length of this sentiment, I'm going to put it on the block sideways. I don't know if you guys can hear that um, or not, but so if you're from the area, you know what EAA means. Um, if not, Oshkosh, Wisconsin is just across the lake. So Lake Winnebago is one of the largest inland lakes, um, at least in the area. Um, and straight across the lake, at least from where I live or straight north on the other side of the lake from where we are is Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Um, Oshkosh Bagash is maybe how or why you've heard of Oshkosh if you're not from the area. Every year they have a world-renowned aviation festival called EAA, which I think stands for Experimental Aviation Association, I think, something like that. Um, and it is a huge event. Um, there are people, there are aviation enthusiasts, enthusiasts that come from all over the world, literally all over the nation and the world um, to participate in that. So town, and the surrounding areas. Um, that's a really great question what this confetti stamp is for. Um, I'll address that in just a second because I, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, so EAA is a huge, like there is no available hotel rooms in like a 50 mile radius or some crazy amount because so many people flock to this area for this EAA air venture. And it's usually, I think like a 10 day thing or something like that. Um, it's pretty long and it's, it's really cool. I went one year, I, I'm not into airplanes at all. It's not really something that like 
resonates with me, but because of how big of a deal it is and because of um, how local it is, I figured we would check it out and it's, it's pretty cool. Um, definitely something to check out if you are from the area or if you have any um, interest in airplanes. Um, but that being said, I um, there's a lot of air traffic going on. Ironically, and this is like so hard to believe, but Oshkosh, Wisconsin, not a very huge um, town. The Oshkosh airport is the busiest airport in the world during EAA because of the traffic that comes through just to fly in um, and be part of this EAA air venture. So really a neat thing for our area and um, something very, very cool. So there are like two days ago on the way to work, um, there was a sky rider flying through the sky, writing things in the sky. And um, I had the kids outside playing yesterday. And in the matter of a half hour that we were outside, we saw five different planes fly through. So it's really cool. And I just heard an airplane overhead and that's why I got on this really long tangent about EAA. <laughs> so, oh my goodness, yes. So my husband used to work at a restaurant on the lake that um, has really good perch and every year for EAA, um, I, mean, I didn't get, I was trying to get that to stick and the sticker didn't, or the glue dot didn't come up with it. Um, every year for EAA, the amount of traffic that they would get is insane and the amount of tips and like, you know, all that good stuff. It is quite, it's a big deal. And um, every area or every area of business and restaurant um, typically has to hire extra help. I know like the A&W, the local Fond du Lac A&W was looking to hire 200 extra staff just for EAA, just for this extra like week and a half. Um, so it's a big deal and I'm sure there are stories I can only imagine. So, all right, I am done now with this card. I ended up putting dimensionals on it. I can't remember what exactly I was gabbing through, but three dimensionals on the back of that and then it just gets centered left to right about um, somewhere between a half and three quarter of an inch from the bottom. Then we put our embellishments. We've got an orange here and an orange up there. And then one, two, and three little blue ones. So we've got the trees. Open it up to our beautiful rolling hills. And again, nice white space for writing. So let me clear the way so that we can see all of our beautiful cards. And let me know what you think you like best. So let me just kind of clear the shot for you so you can't, um, so you can kind of see what we're looking at. Yeah, I still think, and I'm not quite done laying them out, but I still think I like the tree one the best, followed by the lantern. The lantern is really cool. And last but certainly not least, still a beautiful, very cool card is the camper card. So. Let's take a vote. What is your favorite? Um, I I just think they're all pretty cool. I love the pop-out feature and the um, double fold. Awesome. Very, very nifty. Okay. Now, if you are an avid Paper Pumpkin live watcher, you know that part of this is that we make an alternative card with the kit contents. So I am up to the task. I love the lantern and the camper. Don't know which is my favorite. The tree is Sandy's favorite. All of them, I agree. They are all really, really cute. And even if like for me, the camper one doesn't really resonate with me, but I could think of a couple of people that I would like to send it to. So, ooh, we are getting a lot of votes for the lantern card. So that is really cool. I think something that I really like about the lantern card is the fireflies and how um, it adds a little bit more stamping, a little bit more um, detail to the card. So yes, very, very cool. Oh, and I forgot to, sh I know I showed it in the beginning, but we've got the matching envelopes, which look at that color scheme. Look at the beautiful, um, this is just, this would be a great card to show up in someone's mailbox um, to give, put a smile on their face and give them some happy mail. So, 
Let me kind of just clean up the little bit of a messy mess I've got working on my desk so that we can dive into making an alternative. Are we up for the task, guys? <laughs> like, I'm starting, now that this is done, I'm starting to, like, quiver, like, ah, man, here it is. Time, time to fly. Okay, I'm going to move these off to the side because now is when the magic starts to happen. Okay, so, whew, deep breath. <laughs> okay, I am going to bring in an envelope. I thought these envelopes were so beautiful. Ooh, Stella the Lantern and the Fireflies. Absolutely, Luann. I'm not even gonna like, I'm not even gonna forget about that. I'm going to get out my Stella right now and throw some Stella on those fireflies. That is like, wow, I cannot believe. Um, I was thinking of Stella when I was doing the first card and the first card was the camper. And there wasn't an obvious place that stood out to me for where I should put it. Um, so I didn't and then I got gabbing and completely forgot. So, oh my goodness, that makes a really nice touch. Now this is my favorite, absolutely. Um, I'm sure we could put Stella on other places on any of these cards, but that really looks nice. All right. So I was just starting to get into, I'm going to use this envelope. I think beautiful envelopes are beautiful. And I love when Stampin' Up! coordinates the um, envelopes with the cards, but I have such a hard time using beautiful envelopes as envelopes because they just get cut open and thrown away. Like, I don't know, some people maybe, especially like us paper crafters, maybe hold on to matching envelopes or beautiful envelopes. But for the most part, I really think envelopes kind of just get pitched. So it's hard for me to see this beautiful envelope. Like, look, it's full color on all sides. Beautiful printed envelope. So I want to make something pretty out of this envelope. And I've got a little bit of an idea in mind, but We'll see how it ends up turning out. Now, this card kit comes with four each of three different cards. So you've got 12 cards. And if you bring in 24 white envelopes and use the 12 envelopes that come in this kit for alternative cards, this kit could give you 24 cards. So I thought that was another kind of cool thing that maybe we should try to make this magic happen. So... Let's see what we can do. Um, I have my little itty bitty paper trimmer. And what I'm going to do is cut off the parts of the envelope that aren't needed. Um, and now obviously because a card fits in an envelope, an envelope has to be a little bigger than the front of a card. So I'm going to um, trim it down to four and a quarter by five and a half so that we um, are going edge to edge on the front of a card. All right, I had a lot of feedback on people's favorite cards, so now I'm asking for a little bit more feedback too. What do you guys think of beautiful envelopes? Do you have these like same heart palpitations that I do, like kind of guilt of, of using a beautiful envelope um, for an envelope sake, or am I just kind of being a little weird? All right, so I've got that cut down to size. Now I had a card base made, so I'm gonna go grab that. We've got a basic white card base in five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Then I'm going to burnish the edge with my bone folder. Then I'm going to cut this piece down to four and a quarter by five and a half. So I need to trim a little bit off the edges yet. And shift it a little bit on me. So let's see here. All right. Very true. It is a kind of extra artistic surprise. And another thing that is kind of cool about the matching envelopes 
is it kind of gives you a little bit of a preview of what's inside um, when they match. So that is kind of cool too. So we'll see how this turns out and maybe I'll get some fans out of all of you and, and maybe, maybe we will, you chop up the envelopes and use them too. Okay, so I'm not alone. I don't know how many fans I've got on this bandwagon, but um, at least I'm not alone. <laughs> Okay, so I cut that down to five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm gonna take just a millisecond break and take a drink because I'm getting a little parched over here. Okay, now, obviously the main thing that's holding me back on this envelope front is the big white square in the middle. So, my thought on how to do this, and I was trying to stick with using as many of the supplies that come with the kit as possible. So I'm thinking of using Garden Green. Hi Donna from Northeast Michigan. I'm thinking of using the green from the tree, for the tree I should say. Thanks for sharing. And I'm thinking of stamping it on basic white and putting it there-ish. And then the other things that I had in mind. Um, so we've got this color on top. And I'm going to bring the instructions back in because I found on the instructions where it talks about coordinating images or colors. Basic black, Bermuda Bay, crushed curry, early espresso, flirty from mango, garden green, granny apple green, mango melody, night of navy, and whisper white. So I was thinking this color up top was misty moonlight, but because that's not listed, I'm guessing it is night of navy and that maybe it's just semi-transparent because it looks like a watercolor wash. So I am going to grab my night of navy um doo, 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 doo. Uh, night of navy okay here it is and i am going to make basically a patch to go on top of the um oh i like that that's a nested label i don't know if that is current right now huh so i'm in chris's scrap pile this is literally coming together as we speak, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, I really like how this Knight of Navy, Navy nested label is in here. If anyone is on and is a demonstrator or a very avid crafter and wants to let me know if this nested label is still current, I'm going to look it up in the meantime, dies. Okay, so let's see here. Oh man, I haven't been too invested in this catalog recently because it, the holiday mini is bright shiny and new and um i've been all over that right now oh it does not look like that is a current product so i'm not gonna use that then but look how nicely that looks just kind of keep that in mind these hippo friend dies would be very nice too to kind of cover up that area all right, I'm thinking it's not a current product. So let's forget that I fell in love with that and use a different shape. I honestly um, have this kind of tentatively set up over here. Misty Moonlight doesn't look bad, but I am going to use Night of Navy because I think that might pop better. Sorry guys, I'm really thinking out loud right here and um, hoping that the right thing comes to me. All right, so I'm not finding the right size scrap that I was looking for. Cut out the envelope flap to use that. I thought about that. It's this beautiful, um, let's see here. This would be Granny Apple Green. Um, I wanted to draw in just a little bit of this dark blue color, which, ooh, comes from that big flap down there. Okay, I like what you're saying, um, RJ. I am going to use this envelope flap. Ooh, I really like what you inspired in me. Where did my ruler go? Oh man, this is what happens when you have a messy desk, guys. <laughs> I had a ruler. 
Hmm. All right, well, we're just going to wing it on the sides. You guys, I am not as organized as Chris is. I am so sorry. I am a fill-in. Oh, here it is. You guys, I found it. <laughs> okay, so the size I was going for was four and one, two, three eighths by one and seven eighths. So I'm gonna cut this straight. Then cut it to one and seven eighths. Ooh, I'm loving this great suggestion. Then I'm going to cut, I'm gonna cut right here where the envelope flap comes off. And we were looking at, let's see here. Now, this goes beyond my ruler. Hi, Jennifer. So nice for you to tune in. I have not seen you in so long. Um, so I met Jennifer at um, Chris's Winter Creative Escape, which was in December. And um, we're on the eve of coming up on the Summer Creative Escape, which I'm very excited about. Um, Jennifer, are you going to be joining us? I think you are. You might be presenting, to be perfectly honest. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see you. Long time no see. Okay, cool. I like that. Um, then I'm going to bring in a white, which is, sorry, I did pre-cut this, um, as I was pulling. Cannot wait until next week. I cannot wait to see you. That's so exciting. So this white piece is one and... 3 sixteenths, oh boy, sorry guys, by, excuse me, that is 4 and 3 sixteenths by 1 and 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 sixteenths. I don't like cutting in sixteenths. That <laughs> was not very kind of me. And then I think what I'm going to do is grab my Night of Navy ink and a sponge. So bear with me as I go get that. out a little bit. Sorry, I should not have been um, walking and talking. To make it stand out a little bit, I'm going to take some Night of Navy and a sponge dauber and sponge on the edges to make it um, stand out a little more. I also am going to do that by adding dimensionals as well, but I think this might be a fun little touch. I like sponging. It's another one of those retro techniques that I learned when I started stamping 15 years ago. You guys, I'm turning 30 this year, and I have been stamping for a very long time, despite the fact that I'm not that old, per se, as a matter of speaking. Um, but yeah, sponging has been around a long time, and I feel like it's not super utilized. It is coming back, though, I feel like. But I don't know. Sponging and torn paper, as you've seen me use on my techniques a couple of times, it just really adds a lot of dimension to a project. So, But... Back when I started stamping, dyes were not a thing. So like that is the ultimate way to add dimension to a project. Um, and that didn't exist back then. So I guess maybe we got creative. <laughs> okay, so that is that. Then I'm going to take a scrap of basic white. So where am I gonna find a scrap of basic white to stamp on my tree? Put that on the block. How are we doing technology wise? Have the issues kind of um, worked themselves out? I hope, fingers crossed. I've got a crew of 35 with me still, so I'm guessing it's working fine for you. 30, you're still a baby. Said, Elaine, you're 73. Okay, I never would have guessed that. Now, of course, I'm just basing this off of your Facebook picture, but I really thought you were like in your 50s, so. That's a very nice picture of you. 
Um, yes, I am turning 30 this year and um, it is crazy how fast time flies, especially when um, you have kids. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Jen, you're 53? Okay, guys, maybe I'm just a really bad judge of ages because, Jen, I thought you were in your 40s. So, you guys, maybe, okay, maybe it's this. Maybe stamping keeps you young. Maybe that's what it is. So, okay, I stamped the tree in Garden Green. And now I'm going to have to fussy cut it. And I'm really not looking forward to that because this image is, or this stamped image has some like curly branches and it's not going to be fun. <laughs> um, but we're going to do it. You have a son that's older than me. Okay. Well, I would have never guessed that either. Video is fine here. Okay, I'm so glad to hear that. So hopefully our um, video streaming issues have worked themselves out. And I think I'm on deck to be back for another Paper Pumpkin in maybe next month? Um, sometime coming up. I know I have it on my calendar. So you guys, maybe I need to like sit through a technology crash course with... Um, Chris on like how to troubleshoot but I'm just again flying by the seat of my pants and hoping for the best so thank you for sticking with me especially now as I fussy cut no one likes to fussy cut I shouldn't say that I'm sure there are people out there that enjoy fussy cutting but guys it's not really me I used to love it when I was 15 and had more patience and less kids <laughs> Mo, okay, I, I've i heard of Mo. I know you are an avid follower of ours, um, but I don't know if I've ever really Facebook stalked you. Um, that sounds really creepy, like, sorry. Um, but yeah, you look 40, <laughs> right? That you're probably, you probably look like you're 30 for all I know. You like to fussy cut. Well, good for you. Um, I, so remember when I said that there's 12 envelopes in this kit and you could make 12 cards? Yeah, I probably wouldn't make 12 of this because of all the fussy cutting. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just spoiled from dyes and their prevalence, but thank you, Sandy. <laughs> I don't really love it either. I think I don't have the patience that I used to since having kids because I feel like I need to be multitasking all the time and I cannot multitask when I fussy cut. I'm doing a pretty good job talking and cutting, but other than that, there is not much that I can do while I'm fussy cutting. Also, sorry if I'm off the screen at all because I am not paying attention to that. I figured what I was going to talk about because I anticipated this fussy cutting. So I figured what I was going to talk about while I was fussy cutting was my day today. I had to run to Manitowoc, which was about 45 minutes from my house, um, and pick up some stuff from Menards. We are doing a dinosaur activity kit at the museum that I work at. And we had picked up 100 activity kits that were on clearance a couple of months ago. Um, <laughs> stick out your tongue. It helps. I don't want to, I feel like I would bite my tongue and get frustrated and that just wouldn't be good. Um, and it's hard to stick out your tongue and talk and fussy cut. So that wouldn't work out so well for me right now. But, um, so we are picking up 300 more of these dinosaur activity kits from various Menards throughout the state. Um, anyone from Wisconsin maybe will recognize, um, we're going to Manitowoc. Beaver Dam, Waukesha, Johnson Creek, and Burlington. And actually, we have a volunteer. Hi, Deb. Thanks for checking back in. So according to my peeps, our technology issues may have worked themselves out. So I hope it works better for you now. Um, I'm so glad that you're back. 
Um, so yeah, Waukesha, Johnson Creek, and Burlington. And we actually have a volunteer heading to those three locations um, tomorrow, which is great, saving me a couple of hours on the road. Um, so today I went to Manitowoc to go pick them up. And we were in Manitowoc. And I have two kiddos. I have a three and a half year old and a one year old. And I brought my dad with me because he's a farmer and we wanted to check out the Farm Wisconsin Discovery Center. That's what I have on my wrist here. I didn't have the time or thought to take it off. Um, and it was so cool. I am like anyone from the area or anyone that may ever travel to this area or go to a Packer game. They say they get a lot of traffic from Packer games, which is really funny to me. Um, check it out. It is so neat. They've been around for three years and it's just, it's a quality experience. So, um, they, the kids got to see a calf being born today. They also had live bunnies, goats, and sheep. So the kids got to see them and pet them and feed them. That was really cool. And then um, the entire upstairs, they had downstairs, yeah, they had a um, full-size milking calf, like a pretend cow to um, milk, which was really cool. We actually have one of them at our children's museum. Um, and we kind of took some nods from this discovery center on um, some things that when we opened up our farm exhibit. So I'm actually going to flip back and show off my shirt. Um, have a farmtastic time exploring agriculture. And then on the back, um, it was from our ribbon cutting for when we opened up our farming exhibit at our children's museum. So I was really excited to get to the farm discovery farm wisconsin discovery center today with the kiddos and they had the best time so i definitely am going to be going back with them so that's what i figured i was going to talk about while i was fussy cutting and look at that we're all done now <laughs> so let's get these pieces together all right so my card front and i don't want to glue anything down yet because i don't know if anything's gonna kind of um, shift or change from here. But what I have in my mind is that I'm going to glue these two pieces together, pop it up with dimensionals. You guys, I hear another airplane. Like seriously, EAA is like a bustling time here. And then I thought I would put this on dimensionals as well. And then I was going to stamp, let's see here. I was gonna stamp let your light shine. Great job, Fussy Cutting. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that had me a little anxious, but it did work out just fine. So I thought I was going to stamp Let Your Light Shine, and I think I'm going to stamp that in Night of Navy. And then I thought about bringing in some of these, um, I was going to say dragonflies, but they're not. They are fireflies. That's what they are. Um, so I was going to do that. And then let's see here. What else can I do to finish this off? I, I want to put some of these embellishments on because I think they are great. Um, and typically the kits come with plenty of extra. Um, let's see here. We used one, two. Yeah, there should be plenty of extras for this. Thank you. I do think this fussy cutting turned out pretty well. Um, we'll see. Maybe I'll fall back in love with fussy cutting someday. <laughs> um, oh, I remember what I was going to do. I am going to pull my stamping mat back in. Really? There were several planes here in Dubuque last week practicing for the air show. That is awesome. Like I said, this air show is like such a big deal. Stella the Stars, such a great deal suggestion. So I am going to bring this stamp back in. Um, okay. I forgot where <laughs> I wanted to stamp it, but I was going to put this approximately here. And then I was going to put this approximately there. And then I was going to stamp off this tree right here. So I'm going to move some things out of my way and get my garden green. 
All right, so I wanna keep it about a quarter of an inch to the right of the left side and off the top. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp some ink onto here, stamp it off, and then stamp at second strength. Okay. You guys, I was pulling this together. Um, I got here about half an hour before the live. I was gonna try to be here an hour before the live, but I had to stop at work and drop off all the dinosaur kits that I picked up in Manitowoc today. And then I had to um, go over to Joy and Fabrics and pick something up for work and pick up a gift card for my aunt who just turned 70 and is just retiring. Um, and then I came here and when I was at Joanne, I have not been to Joanne Fabrics in a long time. I actually haven't been shopping anywhere in quite a long time. Nope. I shouldn't stick this down yet. I should stamp my sentiment and my fireflies first. Um, so I haven't been anywhere in a long time. So, um, and Joanne's, I had so many clearance like craft kits. And I'm going up north this weekend with my husband, our kids, um, my in-laws, and my nieces. And they are just a really fun age. They're six and eight, and they love doing activities and crafts and stuff like that. So I seriously bought so many, so many craft kits um, to do with them. And I'm so excited. They love doing that kind of stuff, and I love doing it with them. My son enjoys um, doing that kind of stuff too, but um, they're a little older and get it a little more, so it's a lot of fun to do that with them. Um, and then I'm going to bring in Bumblebee for my fireflies. I don't know why. Um, I think they looked nice in Garden Green, but I think I'm going to do um, Bumblebee for these. So that was a lot of fun. And when I got out to my car, it was 520, right? Yeah, I think it was 520 and the live started at six. And I'm like, oh, I gotta get fussed in because I gotta get over to the hive and um, get my stuff together and also figure out what I'm gonna do for the alternative cards. So <laughs> I had a lot of work ahead of me in a very short order of time. So I, this is the second time I've done a paper pumpkin live in Chris's absence. The first one I did was um, when she was in Hawaii and that was that baseball themed kit, which was um, a challenge, but the alternative card that I did was very well um, thought through prior to filming. Um, not completely done, but I had very few um, questionables as to how I was going to end up finishing it. So I am feeling a little ill prepared. Um, but I should have never told you that because you never would have known, right? <laughs> oh man. Okay. So now I am going to adhere this. I have an itchy nose, so I need to take a little second here. I really like these fireflies in Bumblebee. They look so nice. Okay, and then I'm going to, let's see here. Where did I put my dimensionals? Dun, 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 dun. You guys, I have such a mess. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it. Um, so, let's see here. I'm gonna put dimensionals behind that guy. Um, I again grabbed my little dimensionals. That is unfortunate. <laughs> so let's just stick this guy up. Okay. Uh oh, that one's not sticking so well. All right, how did that happen? <laughs> I 
I have a dimensional stuck to me and my banner stuck to my card front. So I am just striking out right now. Okay, let's go ahead and stick this. Now I didn't have it centered. I actually pulled it off to the um, right a little bit. Oh man, and now I was thinking I wanted to put some ribbon as well. We'll see. I'm not completely <laughs> thought through on how this card is gonna come together. So, I'm just, you're liking this card. I'm so glad to hear that, Elaine, because it is um, kind of coming together how I envisioned it. We'll see how it looks in the end. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some dimensionals off in this corner. Um, I need to figure out exactly where this is going and exactly where the dimensionals, I don't want it double stacked, so I need to make sure that I'm not um, putting them in a not so good location. Hello, Vicki. Thank you for joining us. Now, I want to put some of these on, but I also was thinking about putting in some ribbon. Um, man. Let's see here. <laughs> no need for ribbon, and I, you're surprised you said that. I'm really glad to hear that because right now I'm not exactly knowing where I would put it, and I'm also noticing it's not quite. There's a lot of green, so I don't think there is such a thing as a wrong green per se. Um, but you know what? I think I'm going to see if I can find some twine. If I can find twine in a real short hurry, I might do that. Ooh, and I'm seeing a twine bow as well. Um, I think video seems much better now. I am so glad to hear that. And actually, I'm seeing that there are more people tuning in now as well. So I'm thinking the video issues are, um, are resolving themselves. So I'm just bringing in my adhesive eraser because I can see that <laughs> there's... Yes. I So I found... Um, the very vanilla and smoky slate. I don't know what colors are in the ribbon, the twine combo pack. So let me see here. Oh, and it's in the annual catalog. Ha ha. Um, so right now, twine is available in a combo pack. Gray granite. So um, the two that I found are actually... Um, the two that I would like the best anyways. So let's see here. Oh, and this is a little crooked. I didn't try to stick it down. <laughs> All right, that's stuck. It's a little crooked. That's okay. So let's see here. I'm gonna unwind a little bit of this gray granite. I may or may not use it. I am thinking the very vanilla would not be right because I used obviously um, basic white for my little... Um, my little backgrounds. So that would not look right. Um, and I'm thinking of just doing, I don't know, a little bow or um, a little, yes, I know. I wish Stampin' Up! sold the glue eraser too because seriously, it has saved me a bunch of times from little sticky disastrous messes. Um, they are relatively inexpensive on Amazon, or um, you always could buy them through Chris if you ever purchase a um, like card kit or anything like that. Um, she can throw it. Well, obviously, you could pay shipping as well, um, but she could always throw it into a package of yours and get one to you because they are so handy. Um, they really, really are. Okay, I think Dollar Tree has them. Holy man! That would be a real handy little thing. A triple bow. Oh my goodness. I am liking that idea. Okay, so this is how I have it laid out. Okay, so other people know about this Dollar Tree um, idea. Like, that is brilliant. So check your local Dollar Tree or Dollar Store. Wow, you guys. Like, I totally did not know that. Um... I will have to check that out now. I actually, the um, 
children's museum that I work at is right next. What about a bow on the top of the tree? Oh, that's a good idea. That's a cute idea. One, two, three. Um, wow, I haven't used a bow maker in a long time. Let's see here. Let's go this way. And then this, oh no. Um, yeah, so the children's museum I work at is next to a dollar store. So next time I'm in there, I am going to have to check that out because um, they are handy. Okay, so this bow might be a little too big, but we'll see. Ribbon scissors is... I really like that gray. That is totally the right color tone here. Um, I don't know just where to put it. The other thing I was thinking was if I did like a um, wrap and just had like the twine wrapping beneath to just give a little texture. Um, the only thing I think is, hmm, I feel like there's a lot of empty space up there, but it really is showing off a lot of the um, beauty in the paper. And I'm wondering if I wanna double, I, I think I do wanna double stack this tree. So what I'm gonna do, I'm glad I didn't stick it down yet. Where did, here are my dimensionals. <laughs> okay, so I am going to double stack the dimensionals that I have in place right now. And then put, other dimensionals elsewhere and see how that looks. I'm starting to get daring with my creation here. I got to, um, when I was kind of working through it before the live, I got to the point where this was stamped <laughs> and not fussy cut. <laughs> and then I got to like cutting these two layers, but I didn't get to any of the stamping yet. So um, I'm really trying to pull it together now. Let's see here. I think I like it about there. And I do like the double stack. So it does get, I don't have it on my card base yet, but does get a little high. It still should have no problem um, going through the mail. It is rat's nest. Okay, that's what it's called. I was thinking that too. Um, sorry, I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck. Okay, um, I was kind of thinking a rat's nest. Um, yeah, now where did my bow go? Or the bow down here? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to bring in some of my embellishments now, and I think I'm gonna put it on my card base, unless for some reason I think I wanna do, hmm. Dun, da, da, da. You guys, I'm not a pro by any means on this whole like stamping on the fly. Also, it's really difficult to, um, like start to tentatively glue things, but then it gets like stuck and whatnot. So I'm gonna try to feed this ribbon through here. Dun, 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 dun. Um, yeah, so anyways, bow under the light word. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Bum, 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 bum. Just trying to find my tail here. Where's my tail? There we go. Okay, so agree or disagree as you will. Um, and the placing of my, <laughs> thanks Sandy. <laughs> the placing of my dimensionals is somewhat driving where this um, twine is allowing me to go. I think I'm gonna put it here and then do my little bow. Now I wish this could go a little bit farther down, but it can't. Um, and seeing as how I do not yet have it adhered to the card base, I think I'm going to add some twine here. Oh, wow, that got taped way too low. And then 
put my bow down there and then add some embellishments and add some Stella. We'll see. Now, if you guys like this, which it seems like you kind of are, so thank you for <laughs> enjoying this alternative train wreck that we are currently seeing how we can put together. Um, if you're enjoying this and have other ideas on how to do the twine or, or not to do the twine or how to make it your own, I would love to see what you end up making if you have this kit. Um, because I really think there's a lot of beautiful things that could be put together with this. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my bow here. It feels a little bit arbitrary, but at the same time, like it could maybe work there. <laughs> guys I don't know um and then I'm going to glue this baby down and really have some fun with the dement um the embellishments and the um Stella gotta get some Stella on those beautiful little again they're not called dragonflies what are they called um fireflies <laughs> My brain is a little bit fried at this point. And I can see that it's a little bit not super straight. And I think if I made it again, I'd do a little bit better because I'd have a little more direction as I'm going. So apologies on that. But let's get some embellishments on here and some Stella and call it a creation. Okay. Now, I liked when they had um, the oranges and blueies in about quantities of five. I thought that was a really good um, combination. And I really liked having some on the tree as well. So I'm probably gonna put one. Mm -hmm. I'm really bad at random, like so bad at random. So let's put one there, and there. And I do think the general rule of thumb, oh no, that needed to be a double stack. I do think the general rule of thumb on embellishments is to do odd quantities. So I should add one more little guy and I'm gonna sneak a dimensional under here cause that one needs to be a double stack. Um, so where should I put one more blue one? thinking up here okay now get out the Stella definitely putting Stella on the um, fireflies and then I think I'm gonna put a little Stella on these little white spots as well let's see here is that coming out okay yeah top see we're getting it All right, guys, I saw a lot of suggestions about the ribbon, and now I'm getting suggestions as well about the embellishments and stuff like that. So as you're seeing the card come together, I am dying to know, if you were making this right now, how would have you done it different? What would have you done to personalize it maybe a little different that you think could have looked really good? Because I really think I'm going to... I did get this kit. I'm so glad I got this kit. Um, and I think I'm going to use... Um, I have done a tip Tuesday on how to refill your Stella pen. Um, so if you go on the Cards by Christine page and search Stella or refreshing your Stella, you should find that. If you have any trouble, please don't hesitate to um, reach out to Chris or I and we can help send that URL your way. Um, but that is a brilliant thing to do is refresh your Stella pen. Um, so definitely get all that mileage out of it. And I'm going to go a little crazy and Stella on this bottom tree as well. So as I was saying before, um, I love all your tips and suggestions. What do you think you would have done differently on this alternative card? Um, you know, do you like the placement of the twine or keep it off or where do you think you would have put it? Okay, so now I'm going to, oh, I really love that. Oh my goodness. I love this card. I think it turned out so cute and I think it's a great use of the envelope because like I said I'm that kind of person that I kind of cry a little bit when the envelopes are so beautiful and I just envision them ending up in the trash 
Oh, I love it so much. Okay, I think I'm done. I think I did it. So let's clean up our space just a little bit. Bring all of our more bling dots. Okay, I like it. I'm not certain how many extras I'm gonna have because obviously I only did a quarter of the cards from the kit. So I was trying to be a little resourceful and conservative with them. Um, but yeah, I do think more bling dots would have looked really good on this one because the background, I don't wanna say the background is plain because it's not, it's got that watercolor wash to it, but it is a little bit plain. Like I could definitely see how that could be. All right, so here's our creations for the night. Oh, maybe wrap the, tr the um, twine around the tree. That would have been cute. I like that idea. Um, I'd love to hear any other ideas you guys have. Um, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it down here for just a couple more seconds so you guys can soak it all in. Um, and then I'll come back up top with you guys and Thanks, I'm glad you like the alternative. I feel like I'm two for two on alternatives now, guys. Um, the last time it was the baseball kit and the alternative was a fun fold. Um, and I really like how that alternative turned out. And I, I do like this one too. So I'm kind of doing a good job. <laughs> I hope, I hope you guys like it. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys had a fantastic evening. I did. I had a great time stamping with you. Um, and I, I don't know. I'm going to tune out, I think, and head home to the kiddos and the husband. I have to pack for my trip up to Manaqua tonight. So we're leaving bright and early in the morning and I haven't started packing yet. <laughs> so I have a fun night ahead of me, but um, I think it would be a, um, a nice weekend weather-wise for us here in um, Wisconsin I'm, and I'm heading north. So it looks like the weather is going to be good up there too. So, and Chris is already camping. I don't know where she goes camping. So hopefully she's got good weather too. But anyways, um, I hope you had a great night. I had a great night with you guys. You are all so great. Um, and I look forward to when I can do this again sometime. So I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday, excuse me, Thursday and a great Friday ahead, and the weekend is in sight. So let's see, how does Chris do this? Um, sunshine, love, and big hugs to all of you. And um, if there's anything we can ever do to help you out, don't hesitate to reach out, um, and we will see you soon.